Some believe a city can define a person and vice versa. For athletes, their successes and failures represent a city like the buildings and backgrounds that surround them. <laughs> there we go. For Milan Lucic and his home city of Vancouver, the connection is equal parts triumphant and uncomfortable. But it's where he's from and where he discovered his love for the game of hockey. First memory of hockey was playing uh, with my older brother. Uh, we started playing hockey in Vancouver out in the Agrodome for, at the time, it was called Hastings Minor Hockey. And you know, it was always a, a thrill for us, especially because, you know, I remember as kids, you know, we, we got to watch uh, our uncle play a little bit in the, in the WHL when we were really, really young. And then uh, he actually started off with the Vancouver Canucks in, I think, the 93-94 season. So uh, for us to be able to, to do that and have that was, uh, was pretty cool. And I would say uh, that's, that's uh, my first uh, hockey memory as a child. Today, the entire NHL knows when the Oilers number 27 is on the ice. Shot Sekra tipped home in front. The whole kick, Milan Lucci. David driving in, left circle, back door. Big shot score, Milan Lucci. This could be a real good fight. Lucci took exception and lands a big right hand on Derek Engler. He's going to hear it from the crowd of 18,347 as he heads to the dressing room. His style of play developed at a very young age. I would say I was as aggressive, yes. Uh, I think the aggression is something that I've always had in me and uh, the compete level is something that I've had in me uh, since I was a little kid. That's what made me a, a, a good athlete. In 2005, Lucic earned his spot on the Vancouver Giants and got to live out a dream few players get to experience, playing junior hockey in their hometown. I just remember we went, uh, I, I was playing Junior B at the time and for the Delta Ice Hawks and, and we played a game against the Grandview Steelers and I think Kyle Turris, I, I, I know Kyle Turris was on that team and they were at that game watching Kyle Turris, this is the story that I was told. And I had a good game, I think I had a goal and assist and was first star of the game and next day I got a phone call and, and said I was listed by, by the Vancouver Giants. Because my uncle played in the WHL, that was something that I wanted to do as well and and when I had that opportunity to do it with my hometown team, it was definitely uh, an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. The following year, with the NHL draft taking place in Vancouver, Milan was once again poised to celebrate in his hometown. Boston kind of went out, out on a limb with taking me at, at 50th overall, and I think I was ranked like 90th in, or to go late in the third round, and they kind of jumped off the board a bit and, and took a big chance on me and taking me uh, that early in the draft and I actually thought I was going to get drafted by the LA Kings. They had the 48th pick. Once they picked someone else, I, I kind of didn't pay attention to the 49th and 50th pick. So to be perfectly honest, I didn't even get my, hear my name get called. And uh, it was actually my, uh, my mom and my, my dad and my grandparents beside me that, that heard my name get called. And, um, and actually the fans that were there, uh, started cheering too and I was wondering what they were cheering about and it was it was the fact that I got drafted to uh, to the Boston Bruins. In his final year in the WHL, Lucic proved why the Boston Bruins were right in selecting him early in the draft. Leading the Giants to a Memorial Cup, he was named tournament MVP. We definitely didn't want to go home empty-handed and getting a chance to do that in front of in front of our fans in our city, you know, in the Pacific Coliseum which was rocking on that on that Sunday afternoon with 16,000 people. It was definitely one of the greatest experiences of my hockey career. And for me, being a hometown boy, getting to do that in my hometown. I was calling uh, the championship game between Medicine Hat and Vancouver at the Memorial Cup final in 2007. And I think the most vivid thing for me was the fact that the, the place was bananas. It was absolutely bananas. And then, you know, as they now call it and did very shortly after, the chef. Enough credit went that way for the job Willie Desjardins did. Huge hit involving Matt Lowry and Milan Lucic. Lucic, the big forward. And the funny thing is, when I think about it, and even when I look back at it, uh, most people know me not being lost for words very often, but 
Milan was just like a human wrecking ball to the point where I remember when he clobbered Trevor Glass in the corner with the third hit and then got in the fight with Benfeld. It was like I couldn't even really say anything for about the last 11 seconds of the play. There's guys that I've gone to summer skates with uh, that still kind of bring it up and kind of laugh about it. And to be honest, the one thing, you know, it, it's just something that happened. It was just, I came on the ice, a hit was there and I made it. Uh, another hit was there, I made it. And then we had a scoring chance, we didn't score. But uh, the puck ended up in the corner and I had another hit. And then it turned into a fight. And, you know, the, the fans were rowdy and, and we were definitely a little bit nervous about it. And I think it kind of calmed myself and everyone down and, and uh, ended up being a, a, a big part of the game. Uh, I, I started my hockey career as a three and a half, four year old at the Agridome right next door to the Pacific Coliseum and getting to fulfill my dream of, of, uh, of winning a championship like that. I'm so lucky and fortunate that I got to do that in front of my hometown uh, friends and family. Dominating in the Memorial Cup Finals was one thing, but cracking a deep Boston Bruins lineup in his first NHL camp was another. My first impression, he was actually right beside me. Uh one of the first, very first days of camp. Um, and he's just, you know, the big frame. And the thing that got him into the NHL was his attitude. You know, he, he was the happiest person to be anywhere near an NHL jersey. And you could just see it, you know, he was just beaming. And I think he, he did what a lot of guys forget to do is just totally embrace the opportunity that you have to make an impression, right? I think so many guys, for whatever reason, come, come in kind of timid. And he was the exact opposite. You know, he came out like a bull in a china shop, made a bunch of noise, fought, hit, you know, and just made the most of, you know, what slim chance you get, you know, to make this league. I think the most intimidating part was, is you go from, you know, junior guys who are kind of boys and to, to men, especially walking into a dressing room was Zidane Chara. I mean, you know, who's 6'9", 255 pounds, and he's, about three and a half, four percent body fat, and you're like, oh my god, like, you know, these, these are players that I'm gonna have to play against, but thankfully we, we were on the same side for eight years. In 2011, Lucic would once again be tied to the city he grew up in, but this time as the enemy. For as long as you can remember, your goal was to win the Stanley Cup, and I think for me it was, it was extra special to, to be able to, to, to achieve that in my hometown, and and have, again, my friends and family there to, to celebrate with me and being able to bring a cup back to uh, an original six team. And the last guy, you know, the last guy to bring it back to Boston was Bobby Orr, you know, the greatest player to play before Wayne Gretzky. And getting to achieve that dream in, in Vancouver was uh, such, a, such a great, great moment. And, and uh, I, I enjoyed every single second of it. Looking back, Lucic remembers sharing the moment with his dad, who passed away only four years later. He was a huge fan of mine, and, and he was a huge fan of hockey and, and watching hockey. You know, just like the whole household, you know, we were Canucks fans uh, before, I, before I started playing for the Bruins. But I definitely, if you ask me now, he's, he was probably a, a, a bigger Bruin fan than, than anything else. And, uh, it was great to, to share all those great moments with him. Signing with the Oilers in the summer of 2016, the connection was with Peter Shirelli, the same GM who gave that 19-year-old a chance in Boston, was now bringing an experienced 28-year-old to Edmonton to be a leader. I think it's been really good because uh, we've had a lot of success uh, since I've played for Peter. Uh, obviously, he gave me a chance and, and, and took a chance by drafting me early. Uh, in, in 2006 and, and took a chance on me by keeping me around as a, as a 19 year old and, and giving me that chance to excel and, and, and be a big part of his, of his teams in Boston and, and now here in Edmonton. So obviously our relationship's been, uh, been a good one and, and you know, we've, we've already talked about it. The, the ultimate goal is achieving what we achieved in, in Boston and we both believe that we can do that.